Welcome to Tulum. All right, for the next week, I'm gonna be spending my time here in Tulum and adventuring around in the city, on the beach, around the surrounding areas and see what there is to do here. Tulum has a reputation for being very expensive. So I'm gonna show some of that area, not too much, but mostly the activities because that's what I like to do. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'm back with the Canadian Montreal crew. You guys know them, Lisa and Kathy. Oh my god, it's so cheap here. Look at this. Sent to US. Made it to our first street food location here in Tulum. Tulum. We're gonna try out some tacos. It's authentic food. I'm not Mexican, but I have a lot of Mexican friends and they recommended this. All right. Prices are amazing. You have all the basic traditional Mexican food and it's gonna be delicious. Alright, Lisa, do we trust her? Do we trust her? Right, Thanks, I think we trusted yeah. the spice that we yeah. saw on the table. <laughs> Yeah, there's these amazing spice trays coming. I'll show you in a moment. Kathy ordered me one of these things. Rice water. Look at that it's thing. Like it's like cream. So sweet. I need some coffee to take that sweetness out. Such a foodie now. Yeah. So Amazing. Fun. Mexican food is my favorite. Alright, we just finished our lunch at the Tacarilla. And that was for all of our tacos combined. Seven total. Oh, I love Mexico. All right, so that wraps it up for our, our little experience in Tulum Town. We basically just went for a food tour. Coffee, acai bowls, tacos. And then checked out some of the kind of like the local scene and setting. Just kind of get the vibe of the town. Really cool, liked it, and way cheaper than the eating on the beach. <laughs> eating on the beach, mm. way too expensive. We have arrived to Kanlum. This place is looks like a, the blue hole in Belize. However, it's just a lake here or a laguna. And I've never ever seen it online before or anything, but we found it and decided to check it out. So it was a hundred Mexican pesos to get in. It's like five US dollars. And let's see how it is. Well, the entrance is certainly pretty cool here. All right, that wraps it up for Laguna Canlum. And I actually really recommend this place. The water was a nice break from the salt water. It's fresh water. And of course, there's that big like blue hole in the middle. However, if you don't have a drone, it's kind of hard to see it. So I would recommend bringing a drone if you have access to one, because that is really the feature of this place. Otherwise, it's a good swimming hole, relaxing, it's a chill environment. It's not too busy. So we're out of here, on to the next spot. So one thing I for sure recommend while in Tulum is all the cenotes and the Laguna today, for example, they're a small drive away, and if you keep getting taxis everywhere, it can really add up. So, so having a rental car is a great option for kind of that freedom to drive around wherever you want. This car is from Six Rentals, so it's super reliable. We had a great experience with them. 
and you can check them out if you want. Okay, vamos chicos. All right, so today we're doing a cooking class. I'm not sure yet what we're making. Hoping it's tacos or some sort of corn tortillas or something. But we'll see, I'm excited for this. Something I've always wanted to do. Mexican food is in my top three favorite foods of all time. So let's, let's do this. for sure gonna be jumping off of this corn here. It's only 1.6 meters. I'm taller than that. I'm 1.79. Gotta get the pretty shallow dive off that. Whatever, gotta do it. Hey, can you say it? Making corn tortillas. Mm -hmm. Creo un balo. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no, no, plastic, plastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and what's the name of this? ¿Cómo se llama esto? No? Maricona, Maricona. Which is also a bad word, but. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's so wide. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's so wide. Because, Oh no! Okay, we gotta we gotta flop. We gotta oh. rest. <laughs> Guess which mine. one is Mars? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm making a chorizo queso empanada. Empanadas es mi favorito comida de Sudamérica. <laughs> Too big. Oh, it's okay. No, it's perfect. It's good. It's okay. Oh, broke oh. it. <laughs> One fell down already. <laughs> Boom. Chorizo y queso. It's like a giant pierogi. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Let's go. Me, hey, let's go. Yeah. Okay now. <clears throat> Hiccups are here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm paying the price <laughs> for trying to keep up with a Mexican cook. No. No necesito. Yo no macho. No necesito. I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah, here, here. Open the door. I'm dying. Bye bye. <laughs> Finally, I found my flower to make it look beautiful. Oh, look wow, at this. Nice. You should really add something on top of it. Though. No. 
That looks ah. nice. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Ew. So pretty. Oh man, look at Lisa's. No. <laughs> All right, it's time to enjoy our picadas, empanadas. And tacos? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> mm. Delicioso. Alright, we finished. We're so full. Estamos terminé. So full. Terminamos. Estamos Terminamos. Finito. Oh. <laughs> Muchas gracias. A ti, señor. A ti, a ti. Look at the leftovers for later. Oh, man. Leftovers for the fridge. Mm. <laughs> Cooking class. explain what happened well we got here for sunrise and then the guard said sorry it's not open till 9 nueve a la mañana all right so we arrived to copa and copa is completely flooded from this it's like they get so much rain over here What are you doing, Mark? Well, I guess we have to get to the archaeological site <laughs> somehow. So, let's go. Oh, it's so gross. <laughs> There's a frog stuck in your toe. <laughs> <laughs> So unfortunately, because of COVID, you now cannot climb on top of pyramids. Normally, you can go up, you can go for sunrise, however. We arrived here at 7 a.m., it didn't open till 9 a.m., and then we finally waited out, got breakfast, came back, and they're like, yeah, you can't climb the pyramids either because of COVID. Oh. <laughs> So all of these ruins are part of the Mayan history, which you may have heard of Chichen Itza. That's one of the archeological seven wonders of the world. All right, we made it here to the third and final structure. And the last people to inhabit this village were from 100 AD, so quite old. And as you can see, it's super well preserved and it hasn't been discovered that much as they, uh, above these steps here, is still kind of forest and trees above it. It's just only been cleaned, cleaned on the bottom. And apparently only 5% of the structures have actually been uncovered and discovered. So there's a bunch more throughout the jungle that we don't know about, can't explore. So that's cool, mystical. it up for our time here at Calavera Cenote. It was super expensive to get in, 250 Mexican pesos, which is like 17 US dollars per person. However, we did get some time with it by ourselves, so that was super cool. Um, if you get here 12 o'clock light, the rays are amazing, but they stay around to like three, four in the afternoon, and that's when people are kind of gone. So all in all, I do highly recommend this one. Cenote Calavera for the win. What are you doing? I'm trying to get by. Go by. <laughs> the tree was dead anyways, so I don't want to scratch the car. Finally, we're in the right place! Yeah, we made 
it to Takpiha Sanate after getting uh, lost for an hour and a half in the jungle by following the wrong Google Maps directions. Make sure you don't do that. Go to those hojos. Anyways, here we are, it looks cool. Nash, I'm so sorry. Wow, this place is stunning. All right, I don't know if you just saw in that last clip when I was filming Katy, the lights just went pitch black in here and we're in a cave and we couldn't see anything. It was like, could wipe your hand in front of your face, couldn't see anything. We had to pull out our iPhone lights and like shine the lights around. And then some guy comes in and says, oh, I'm sorry guys, the, we ran out of gas from the generator. The lights will be on very soon. <laughs> so this whole place is lit up by a generator, which is hilarious, it's so funny. up our cenote adventures we only have visited two so far but apparently there's almost four to six thousand cenotes all throughout the yucatan peninsula so that's just insane so we're going to visit way more but that's all we got to this week so that wraps up our week here in tulum i didn't mention much about the beach hotels or the beach because that seems like a very obvious thing to do here in Tulum. So for the next month, I'm going to be cruising down to Yucatan, Campeche, Chiapas, all the way down to Oaxaca State. I hope you guys stay tuned for those adventures and the things to do there. So leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.